SFJ 4x4 Studios presents in my in my oversized four wheel drive Jeep a Jeep podcast starring industry experts pure monosity what what, what? say that again with mad scientist Scott Brown use my drill press as a sort of lathe our host Neil Simpson if one light goes out they all go out filled with shenanigans we, we are really professional with Jeeps. This is I Speak Jeep. Are we ready, Jeffrey? Yeah. This is it. We're doing this thing. Good morning, good afternoon, evening, wherever, however you are joining us. We thank you. This is the I Speak Jeep by SFJ 4x4. I am Neil with SFJ4x4.com. And with me, my esteemed... Keep going. Colleague. <laughs> Best friend, janitorial expert, <laughs> vintage Jeep restoration artist, and uh, chainsaw expert. Sort not of. at all true. <laughs> no, not at all no. true. <laughs> <laughs> so I came up with a great thing. I told my wife after Jeff left yesterday that I was totally going to do this on air, that he is the Jeep version of Paul Bunyan with his blue steed. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We got a picture for that. Oh. His blue steed. Yes. There it is. There oh, it is. my gosh. <laughs> Look at the gladiator doing work. Yes. Doing we, work. Me and uh, Jeff uh, played uh, Lumberjack over the weekend. Well, okay. That was his tree. That was my tree. That was after the first cut. Um, yeah. Is this from the property looking forward? Like the back of the property looking that's, forward? That's, that's my shed right there. Yeah. Oh, and and this is this is so the this side over here is yeah. the neighbors. Yes. Okay. We were those trying you, desperately not to cringe on the neighbor. Those of you who are are listening um, and are unable to see the atrocious picture that is on screen right now, <laughs> um, they the guys obviously sufficiently made a widow maker out of a tree a couple times. Um, <laughs> was the what did the tree do to you? Uh, it fell another branch. It was three branches or huge limbs originally, and it fell and. Uh, towards the neighbor's house and then we had to cut that up oh, which left threatening half, the neighbor's house half of the trunk gone uh and it was a good tree and stayed up over 100 mile winds over the course of the winter um, 100 mile and i think there's a bit of the an neighbor literally there. referenced it oh so well, there, that's you, not from me that's from my next door neighbor you were you were, he was giving you flack he was yeah. he didn't want, want that tree he, no. to, and then, uh, to I'm, give him a new skylight in his house and then we dropped the other limb that was threatening my stuff and and then jeff was like you know now that that doesn't have the other limb to block the wind that's probably gonna fall down now <laughs> oh my god and i was like yeah it doesn't have any leaves on it right now so it's not even heavy so we gotta cut that down now so that happened <laughs> So did you completely limb this thing? Is it? It is a trunked? It is a stump. It's right a now. stump. Yeah, it's completely gone. It made me sad, but it was so rotten. It was uh, one of those classic things. Like, uh, this is my PSA for everyone: go check your trees, because <laughs> I thought this tree was a lot healthier than it was. And uh, when it was coming, when it finally came down, I was like, oh, that's rotten. Oh, and that's mushy. Oh, my wife was literally digging in the tree; it was all mush. Yeah, like, oh, like uh, oatmeal. So yeah. she's like, oh, it's leaking out here. And I'm like, that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> it's oh, not dear. Good. So. OK, well, that's that sounds good. And we have we had Paul Bunyan and we know how good you actually. I mean, your chainsaw. Wow. So I actually. That's that's his chainsaw. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they have pictures. It, he was cutting that little branch. <laughs> what is that? What is that that's, chainsaw? A, I mean, people can't see that. Electric battery. I told Wait. Jeff it was a good EV versus gas. Uh, try out. It was an EV versus gas try there, out. There's me with a 20 inch bar chainsaw oh. cutting through a log while he was doing a branch. And, yes. and your electric chainsaw is what bar? Is that like a 14 inch bar? It's a 12. <laughs> I really even tried to give you two inches on I that. It's where size matters, folks. Yes. Good morning, Joe Brilla. He's okay. saying good morning. And uh, and your good morning, wife, honey. And uh, and your wife has said it's not good morning. It's not the size of the saw, it's how you use the saw. <laughs> Scott, in that situation, it wasn't even that for you. I'm sorry. That's, that is just uh, so fitting. I, I will give you credit. You were able to cut a branch off as it dropped on my head. But Yeah. <laughs> Spatial awareness is not my strong point. <laughs> 
Um, folks, this is episode number 25, as I had mentioned. We're going to be, we, you know, if if you're still with us, all three of you who might watch anyways uh, sometimes, would uh, would know that we just droned on for, I don't know, I don't, it seemed like 18 weeks about engines, yes. uh, because Scott and I are a little geeky we about that. We got really excited. We got really excited. We talked... Um, uh, we could have talked more about. Yes. Uh, we we chose to take it easy on you and stop while we were ahead. That's, that's right. We gave you a break, <laughs> um, and so uh, so we 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 closed out our replacement for displacement conversation, um, and so we're going to be we were we were planning a, a, another thematic conversation, uh, but we've actually been uh, I don't want to say inundated, but we're having a great opportunity or experience where people are calling, messaging, emailing. Um, it, it's awesome. And, and our listeners uh, who are calling in are like, oh, you know, this is so cool. I, I'm, I'm really enjoying the podcast, the vibe that we're getting, uh, the information that's coming out. And somebody recently called in asking about uh, l- leaks in their Jeep, right? Because that so- might have something to do with like up to this week, it's done nothing but snow or rain for ever. Without, without, <laughs> without a doubt, right? I mean, it has been just a wet, soggy, cold uh, spring that yes. hasn't let off, right? Mother Nature said we're, she's going to make us pay for it. And then they heard that we were discussing this, and it the sun came out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, that's the thing, right? So, I mean, if you have a Jeep, we drive big shoeboxes down the road. It's kind of the nature of the beast. Um, and they're convertibles. And they are convertibles, which is an added layer of challenge, uh, challenge and, and engineering uh, obstacle that is, you know, here for us to overcome however leaky jeeps is unfortunately something that we encounter constantly so uh somebody called in recently they had a new to them i believe uh jk jku and they were um had done some of the 12 stages of of coping oh my gosh and (laughs) all of the incorrect youtube videos um and so uh, (laughs) yes or stuff leaking out yeah, well, in this specific situation, a water leaking in through the tops, right? So what we're going to be talking today, we're going to go through a little bit of our process, what we've encountered, um, and uh, and talk you through, because that was a, an important request from one of our listeners. So we decided in conversation internally last the end of last week, we're like, hey, you know, well, let's pivot and address something that one of our listeners has uh, explicitly um, you know, asked for. So we'll be talking about that today. We will be talking about our, our hashtag not sponsor this product here between Scott and I, um, which is fluid film, fluid film. Bom, bom, bom. So we'll be talking which, about that shortly. Spoiler alert. We'll be talked about in our leaking conversation. It will be. And that's, <laughs> and that's a good one, a good leeway. And, um, and then if you don't fall asleep uh, through those two conversations, he will wake you up. <sighs> Jeffrey on our production side, big, big breath, big breath. Uh, Jeffrey on our production side has prepared a Jeep inspired sea shanty for us um, for Neil to sing. Which, if you're uh, if you've recovered from Christmas and the twelve Jeeps of Christmas, wait, there's more. Uh, but wait, there's more. You will um, definitely not enjoy this either. So, <laughs> oh, don't forget about the epic rap battle. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that didn't go well. Yeah, yeah. So, um, if 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 you ever make it through to the actual ends of these uh, these, there are oftentimes a, an opportunity where you get to to sit, laugh, and enjoy. Um, Scott and I doing things outside of our comfort zone. So there's that. Um, and so as I, I did mention before, big updates happening in the world. I'm doing things with my hands here. Like, what are you doing? I don't know. Okay. I was talking with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I don't uh, know what that was. was <laughs> that, that sign language was not, <laughs> not readable. Well, you know what, folks? There is no conspiracy theory here. There is nothing oh, sign dear. language. I was. I don't oh, know. The no. hand started waving around. And oh, then I boy. caught view of it yeah, on one of our, our monitors, um, and uh, and and so I'm I'm gonna try and hold my coffee cup. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go with you. Were just so excited and celebrating the fact that we're on episode number 25. Yes, yes. and and we've had a um, perceived outstanding success, and so that's a big thanks to all of our listeners and viewers. It's important to note 
uh, that we are live every Monday at 10, 19 a.m. on Facebook. That's up for about 24 hours before it comes down. The audio goes up on your favorite streaming platform on Wednesday. And the post-production version of the podcast goes uh, on YouTube on the Friday following the live. So there is your primary way to catch us. Then, then cash, you know, the, the you know access the cached uh, video um, because obviously there's such critical information that you uh, hopefully didn't miss, and so you have to find it and see us do our thing again. Uh, a big thanks to everyone who has uh, here these. This this sticker here, right? <laughs> uh, super fun, right? Scott and I doing our thing, uh, the mad scientist and I. And, and so those of you who have purchased stickers and or gear. So big thanks to you folks. Uh, we are working on processing the orders. Again, uh, this sticker, $4.19, helps support the production of this podcast. Uh, also shows you uh, shows your community how, you know, how serious you are about the Jeep life. And then on, um, on our website in the month of May, order $41 or more of SFJ gear and, uh, and get the sticker for free. Also, again, showing how serious you are about the Jeep world. So, folks, please support the podcast. We, we appreciate your, you know, your support and calling in and questions and purchases and all that kind of stuff that you've done. Um, you know, we're here for you and to do this kind of stuff. Uh, Scott and I would have these conversations at, at late at night and talk geeky Jeep things, but it's way more fun when you're involved. Yes. So, uh, and don't forget about the shirts. The poll is still live. Well, and that's what we we're going to say. The poll for the I Speak Jeep uh, shirt contest, which is, you know, primary here. There are three options. They are not all on this yellow, though we have had a number of people express interest. They like the yellow. The design is meant to be printed on the color shirt of your choice. So the idea is ideally that um, we do a single color print. Looks good on just about any color, and you can match your Jeep, right? We all know in the Jeep industry how we love our uh, our coordination and our little accent colors. So um, you could have a blue Jeep and a green shirt. Um, Jeffrey? Yep. And uh, or 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 the primary color of your shirt and uh, and the primary color of your Jeep, your choice. And um, so that poll will be open for about five more days or we'll shut it down. Do we know who's which design is leading right now or Cur should we? Currently, design number three is leading. Ah, people love this. Uh, nope, it's over here. Yep. The hand. People love the hand, uh, the wave. Right. Which is which is cool, except for I really love the. uh I like the middle one. The middle design, the, yeah. the breast the breast piece on the middle design there, right? So the back plate is cool on the third one. Um, so we'll see. We'll yep. see. So did you have a good Mother's Day? I, I had a wonderful Mother's Day. Thank you for asking me. <laughs> no, <it> was, uh, <laughs> or did your wife have a good Mother's Day, I guess? I she, did. she did. She um, did. And, and I, the, it was the gift that kept on giving, honestly. Uh, so uh, I had... Purchase. She's a big flower person. Yes. Um, you know that. But for yep. those of you who are listening, she's a voracious flower gardener at this point. Uh, loves, loves, loves her flowers. Springtime is great because she's you know out seeing any little thing that pops through the ground. Yep. Celebrates and nurturing them. it, loving, nurturing on it. it, loving on it as if it's like a, it. a new newborn baby. Yes. You know, she's like, oh, you little <laughs> crocus. You know, so she's very excited. Uh, so I bought her soil mm. and pots. Uh, and, and, and other assorted goodies. But then I also bought two beautiful hanging baskets, which I just, I just hid in one of our gardens. Oh, so she found them yet? She found them this morning. Oh, okay. So it was like, the, again, the gift I kept on giving, giving, right? Yes. But we also celebrated um, my son's birthday. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw that he got one year older. Yes, he got one one year older. We're and Down the one boy, the co here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yours. And, uh, uh, of course, he's, you know, because he's 80, we took him golfing. <laughs> Oh, of course um, you did. <laughs> <laughs> so and you had a great time, I'm sure. We did. We did. We went to Top Golf in Pittsburgh. But you know what? The the, the piece that I have not shared with you guys um, was then after we had a, a just absolutely wonderful day with uh, with family and spontaneous gardening on my wife's behalf, and she just <laughs> randomly put a flower bed in in her mother uh, her mother's house. Just randomly. Well, I mean, Oof. just. Yeah, they, there was pictures online, and my, my mom was like, oh, that must have been pre-planned. I was like, no, my wife was like, she got done with, like, dinner, 
uh, two o'clock dinner, you know, I was like, I'm going to go put an entire garden bed in you now. Know, now. Yeah. And uh, sent, you know, her, 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 you know, her, her mother's uh, significant other out and he, he got mulch and weed barrier and flowers and, and a whole nine yards, you know. That's how my wife works. Yeah. Pew, pew, shooting from the hip. Yeah. Um, no, the really cool thing that I didn't share with you guys was we, we then did a tour day Pittsburgh. Mm. And for some people, uh, well, many people may or may not be aware uh, that this this company actually has roots in Pittsburgh. Okay. And uh, and and there was a, a period of time where I was operating out of a derelict two bay garage. And with your Manchi. With the Manchi. Yep. And um, no 258 was safe. And no 258 was safe, <laughs> right? And so that was the whole idea was that we would, I would go uh, out and around Pittsburgh and buy up 258s and uh, Dana 44 and Dana 60 axles and had this whole process of buying up these, these parts and then breaking them down and selling them and doing uh, stroker uh, how to's and, and all that kind of stuff and then selling off axle parts. So we actually went in and uh, saw where that garage was. Oh, that's cool. Um, and I took a picture because the garage is no longer there because it was structurally unsound. And part of it <laughs> of was a dirt was. floor. <laughs> uh, I was working in a dirt floor. Uh, part of it was a dirt floor at the time. And so I actually took pictures. And it was just like we drove through a s- straight, derelict, a very low-income neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> of course, we're driving Jennifer's mall crawler through. <laughs> And, it doesn't uh, stick out at all. Oh my gosh! Oh boy! We left this particular area, and we just kind of stopped and we kind of looked at. We were like, people there seemed like they wanted to hurt us. <laughs> you know? Oh, no. <laughs> so it was kind of neat. It was kind of neat, and uh, and there's there's obviously a ton of stories that go back to when I was doing that type of Jeep work and, and engine and axle work in Pittsburgh on a kind of a heavy part-time basis. And then we, as, as we kind of travel north, we actually went past the house that we, we lived in um, and that you went to a couple times, the cottage, yep. where I actually did a lift kit in the driveway on your wedding day. Yep. And you tried to scare me in the off-roading the Manchi. Yeah. <laughs> See, there's a lot of history there, <laughs> yeah. Jeep-related history. That's a really cool area. It was a beautiful area, and we we did a whole tour of that yesterday. Um, it's a great place for a cottage, but not to live no, full time. Correct. That's 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 <laughs> that's, that's, that's exactly reality. what we said last night. We're yep. Like, hey, this is Leo. We're driving down like this little cow path, and he was like, "This is a road." I'm like, eh, that's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, people live here all the time. You know, yeah. my my wife was a good sport and moved sticks uh, begrudgingly for the tree. That was her, her mother's, mother's day. day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did try to take her out to Way dinner. Way to be a charmer. Uh, yeah. And uh, we've been too busy to really do the traditional Mother's Day stuff, so I apologize to my poor wife. <laughs> She's uh, always a good sport and always a big supporter of everything I do. Um, just So that you move sticks. She she helped move sticks, and then we did go for a nice uh, car ride and went through uh, Geneva on the Lake, which it was wall to wall, people. I it was saw crazy. pictures. I saw pictures. It was insane. Really crazy. So we, uh, you know, we didn't really partake in that stuff. We kind of went around. We're not big crowd people. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we went to the candy store and uh, got the kids some candy, and found out this cool little place we had gotten uh, food up last year. Actually, had ice cream. And it was really good ice cream, so we got ice cream. Okay. Uh, and then went to a place that her mom had recommended for food that we had not heard of before in Madison, and had dinner, and then rode home. It was time to put the kids to bed. So were you at least cruising on something cool? I we took the JK because it needed fuel. So sadly, hmm. no. But we did take the Rambler to church. Isn't that kind of funny? The world that we live in that like our, <clears throat> your JK and my wife's JL do not register as our cool vehicles. Yeah. I mean, I did say did to my son, of- I was like, do you think we're the biggest Jeep on the strip? And we were. Oh, yeah. Until two JTs come through. And then uh, Amy was like, oh, you know, where's Jeff? That was his people. That was his people. <laughs> the JT crowd. Oh. That's funny that we're at a point in our, yeah, you know, in our Jeep experience. Yeah, it's on 37s. That's, uh, it's okay. par for the course. It's 37s. Daily driver right there. <laughs> yeah, it's a daily. It's, a, it's par for the course. Well, I was. <clears throat> Good morning, I was, Dave, by the way. Hey Dave, good morning to you guys. Um, and and actually Dave, a good one, and he's got me on a hunt right now because uh, Dave Dave is a, a good listener from out of state, and uh, 
uh, listener viewer, and he he had the most pe- peculiar situation where he actually has a computer, his ECM in his Jeep um, does not belong there. Mm. So I'm on the hunt right now to, to kind of put together that story and why is that the case? Because um, that's pretty interesting uh, as to, to the fact that it, it doesn't make sense. So we'll put his story together. I was actually, you know, some people know, I'm, you know, we're moving, we're building the, the tiny house, we're doing all that crazy because, uh, of course, the 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 American idealism bootstrap mentality of like starting a company with, you know, no money in your pocket. And yeah, that, that wasn't, wasn't enough. enough. That wasn't good enough. We got to build a house from scratch. We got to build a house from scratch with, in a big open field. No budget. <laughs> My wife looked at me and goes, do you think we'll ever just like like take the easy way? Like, <laughs> no. do you ever like. No. C- can we just do anything? And, and in his defense, you know, he, this was the second plan. The first plan was a very detrilect almost falling down building they wanted to revive. Oh, yeah, that's a, a, a kind of a historical it, you know, monument we yeah. were trying to revive. I still think that would have been cool. It would have been so cool. And, and me and my wife love that. We go by old houses with no windows and trees growing through them, and my wife's like, I wonder what cool stuff is still there. I know. It has know. a story. We love that stuff. That's why we buy broken down vehicles <sighs> and then try to save them. <laughs> so with that said, I think... He's doing the house version. I'm doing the house mm-hmm. version. Uh, what I think... Uh, I want to do is we go through the process of moving. Most people are familiar with Old Blue. And um, Old Blue was, if you're not, uh, there's a ton of videos out on the internet right now. Uh, it was a Jeep that I rescued out of a field somewhere around 16. Um, wow. And it was just, yeah, no, don't, 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 don't think too much about that. Okay. So it's a 1964 CJ6, uh, which is a, a super cool, um, highly, it was actually a highly produced vehicle. Uh, for about 10 years. Yeah, it's the most unrare, rare vehicle you'll ever see. That's the best way to put it. Yeah. And uh, I bought this in a pasture um, from a couple guys. It didn't run, drive, stop, do anything like that. Anything a Jeep um, should do. Correct. And, of course, I paid good, hard-earned money for it. Yes. And uh, m- moved it around till somewhere around 17 or 18, 18-ish. Um, I took it on uh, as a project with my kids and, uh, you know, like a driveway for, project. For fun. For fun, <laughs> and uh, and and had a great time with it, and then wheeled it, and in uh, wheeled it to a whole bunch of different places, you know, Anthracite and uh, uh, Southington, it you know, so on and so forth, uh, and Tom's it, Trails. And then in true Neil fashion, someone was like, "Hey, I need some thirty-three inch tall tires." No, 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 no. <laughs> Hold on a second. And actually, it was uh, it, it did the it did the entrance way at the Dayton Off Road Expo. It was oh, yeah. in the Seagate Convention Center at Toledo in nineteen. Yep. So it was this really neat Jeep, right? Then we we were at uh we were at Dana Corp. Do you remember that? And they gave yep. me diff covers for it and yep. pretty blue and matched it. And big shout out to Blue Jeep Crew because I was on there posting pictures of it for a while. Um, all of that stuff, right? And then I parked it because I wanted to lock the rear axle. Oh, uh, that's I what ripped it was. the rear axle because, of course, then it can't have anything you nice. It out by selling then parts. I parted it out by selling parts. It's not actually <clears throat> parted out, but and now like there's no rear axle shafts or anything like that. Oh, that's I right. Was it's thinking, got camber. Yeah, it's got it's cam for days. <laughs> I was thinking I that. Um, that I need to drive it to the shop. Oh no. I think we should. I think that I need to we uh, have car trailers. I think that exactly as it sits. Remember and that I haven't thing touched it about doing it the easy way. I haven't touched it since pre-COVID. I'm on board with this idea, Scott. And I are. think <laughs> that what we're gonna do is, I know that there are some some beat uh, five on five sort of matching wheels and tires out front, and they're not they're not actually matching at all, but they're sort of the same size. And I'm going to find and figure out an axle somewhere laying about my house. And I'm going to put it together and we're going to I'm going to make it run and we're going to have we're going to try and film it and I'm going to drive it. Um it's not exactly the most legal thing either, but I'm going to drive it to the shop. Well, and uh, and for those that don't know, that was the original SFJ podcast was done in that. Was the original blue. podcast was done With in lots blue. of lighting issues. Lots of lighting issues, sound issues that that it was just not a good. It was. It was, was not good. Plans. It was awesome. It was super cool. <laughs> yeah, like, we thought like, it was hey, cool. There's a podcast. The and producer an old at Jeep. the time was like, "Why? Yeah, what are we doing? Yeah, didn't think that was a good option. No. But uh, <laughs> we're gonna drive it. I'm gonna drive it to the shop. We're okay. gonna re- resurrect it. I live a little uh, around an hour, but obviously longer if I have to take all back roads. Yeah. 
uh, because obviously I'm not legally allowed on the road in it. Um, yeah, it's a red flag right there, you know, just to give everybody a warning. <laughs> I think well, we're going to ensure what it. roads you're going to be on. No, we're going to we're going to do everything that's <laughs> necessary to make it legal, legal. But it's not like an actually like safe vehicle. <sighs> I'm not going to like take anybody else. I had a brake on it at one time. Uh -huh. I think one or two brakes was functioning. It'll be good enough for Ohio <laughs> inspection. <laughs> Inspected and insured in the state of Ohio. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's all that needs to be said. It'll be it'll be legal eagle in the state so of Ohio, when, folks. When you do break down and can't revive it on the side of the road, I should wake you wait like a half. Oh, I'm an sorry. Hour, I'm sorry. Minutes. I see. I think the problem you're mistaken in this. And then I'll. Come I heard down you say Amy's when you break down. Bring it back. But I think what's important for you to hear is when you say we break down. <laughs> when when we. No, are, I gotta be able to drive the seven down to tow you back, flat tow nope. you. Nope, nope, nope. We have a Greg, we have a Jeff, we have a. Oh God. We're not counting Davy. Well, we have. <laughs> <laughs> Davy's gonna be hanging out somewhere on there filming it. Davy's gonna be like riding on the back. I think you and Davy hustling. I'll so tell you what. Jeff we'll put rescue. Davy in the bed of the truck, and I'll f I'll drive by you guys while you're driving it. We're not. We're gonna do this. Does the gladiator push go pull, that slow? Push pull. <laughs> push pull. Or or if I put or, it in four low, maybe. Does it have high range? So isn't it always in low range? Yeah, it's always in low. Okay. First challenge. <laughs> <laughs> this was a really cool Jeep that I wheeled the, the snot out of, and uh, and it had a Patronix electronic it ignition. I have not looked at it, not at all. It sat derelict for two, two plus years at this point. Yeah. Um, totally drained the gas. To that, like, t to oh, yeah. tire, is, tire is, is flat on it. I'm not draining gas. No, I said that you totally like drain the gas. You know, put a car cover over it. It's Spe in the garage. Speaking of draining gas, <laughs> uh, that saw that I was using that outperformed his electric one. Yeah, two and a half year old gasoline in it. I wish I had good gas. <laughs> it it <laughs> worked gas. great. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's okay. My saw, charged from last year, in the shed, so it saw all the cold temperatures. Yeah. Pulled it out. Because he put bar, asked for bar and chain oil for his saw, I was like, okay, I'll put some in mine, I guess. Right. Filled mine up. Obligatorily All gave my it little love. hacking I did was still on that battery until yesterday when I tried to chop down the stump that was too big for his 20-inch bar. It was too big for his. his. <laughs> yes. And you thought that you were going to. Well, that's what I had. Let, let, me, let me clarify this. I had it cut. Almost all the way through, three we just needed a little force to pull yeah. it down. Three quarters of the way. And I refused to drive on my neighbor's yard to pull it with my winch because somebody put the wedge towards his house. So I tried to pull it this way. The tree said no. So I went out there with my little saw and tried to cut where he cut. It hadn't got completely through. And I cut a big part of it. But Do you want to borrow a real saw? I no, he's actually, not allowed a real saw. He dropped tree branches I, on I, me. I could so have I, brought at you one, guys at one a point, real I had, saw. I'd actually said like, "This is not going to happen." And I'm sitting in my JK, lamenting. I'd put all the stuff away. My wife comes over. She's like, "Stop shopping for saws." I told him I'd I come back with Milwaukee the saw. I just ran out of saws. time. I had Mother Day plans. I had to do. <laughs> so then I finally, begrudgingly, gently backed the JK onto his property, wrapped the winch around it, and it came right off. Another use for winches. Yes, we could do a th whole, 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 uh, whole it's podcast on, <laughs> on, on winching, right, yes. and, and obscure uses for winches. <laughs> uh, folks, if you have made it this long, uh, we actually want to include you in one of our upcoming podcasts, and so we are going to have you send us your best recovery uh, video picture stories, like the one for the sex off the side of the road. <laughs> It's gonna be. <laughs> it's not. No, we are going. To, we are going to derive that on all back roads, safely insured legally ish. Uh, oh boy. To to here Flat to the showing is driving. Just so you know, it's just not under your own propulsion. I don't. I don't care if we I, we have to push it and like you know just that's repeatedly jumpstart it. Jeep. It'll just it'll actually work. No, no, that's that's way too. <laughs> that, that makes way too much sense. I know. We're gonna do this. But we want you to send us your videos, pictures, and stories. Send them to Jeff C at sfj4x4.com, right? And so just like we had done the what's in a name, we want you guys to share your recovery videos and yes. pictures and stories with us. And obviously, more if it's too big of a video, better. more precarious, the better. And we will do a segment in the near future about... 
uh, situations we've gotten ourselves in it's and happened. how how we have gotten out one way or the other or winching your uh, your tree down, so on and so oh, forth. That's that's mild compared to some of the stupid things we've done. Yep. So join us. Make sure your stories are heard um, on the I Speak G podcast. All right. We are going to take a quick commercial break, Jeffrey. And when we come back, we are going to be talking about leaky Jeeps, the kind that comes in like water through the roof, not oil out the engine. Hey, Jeep family, we hope that you're enjoying this content, and we want to make sure that you head over to sfj4x4.com, find some of this cool merchandise, give us a call at our facility, 440-813-3663. Option one. Option one. And make sure that you tune in to our live podcast every Monday at 1019 a.m. And check out our updates on YouTube on Tuesdays and Fridays. Until then, Jeep on. Uh, shout out to Kevin, who has uh, reached out to us. He said his ride, uh, he was at SOR this weekend, something done off-road, mm-hmm. and uh, said his ride included three-plus hours of recovery. There's some mud at Southington that is not nice. I've been in there. Right now, <laughs> I'm I, curious it sounds like some of that, that mud at. is in the Jeep at this point. Yes. I, I'm wondering where he was at with that. Was that the backwoods or? Yeah, I, it's one of the cool things. His whole family likes the wheel. I saw he went out with his mom on Mother's Day. That was really fun, wasn't it? That was it? really fun. That was neat. I uh, And that's what actually one of the places where we I got us in a lot of trouble uh, <laughs> in the mud at Southington. But that's for another podcast, folks. Yes. Uh, we are, n- are going to talk about leaky, leaky Jeeps. And this was, a, like I said, this was a, a listener viewer request. Um, and so hopefully we do this, uh, you know, service. And we haven't just jabbered about too many other things that you're still with us and you can yep. uh, enjoy and hear leaky Jeep conversations. So, so one of the advantages of us is we actually own Jeeps, drive them every day, and we have leaks too. <laughs> so <laughs> I also we've dealt with we've dealt with leaks before just the JK model. Yes. Do we need another Jeep commercial for <laughs> Jeep Depends? Oh my gosh. Uh, we we should do like the squeaky door syndrome, but uh-huh. for leaks. Uh huh. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. So we need to push that that uh, squ- the the door, yeah. squeaky door. I, I think the big difference is before the JK, we all knew they leaked. It was kind of like a bad of passage. Like, yeah, I got wet on my drive this morning. It was awesome because I'm a man, and or I'm a tough woman, and and my Jeep just is that. Uh, right. I, you know, I remember going down the road in my buddy CJ seven and had a soft top in the middle of the winter, and it had a at least an inch by two inch swath by the windshield and snow is coming in at oh my, my face gosh, yes making me cold uh, and you're scraping the inside of the windshield with yes. a scraper yes so you could see that's just that's a pat you know that's a, that's, that's a, what you did right a passage my yes. yj as i was driving to high school you know the yj the the soft tops flopping yes and snow is snowing into the interior yeah, i mean you me. just always brushed your seat off before yes. you drove home it was just what you did that's what you did and then you got you know the jk opened up to a new market and suddenly people are like you know i really don't like snow on my seat and and that stuff and it's way better than the old jeeps and, and it's important to note, folks, when when you're listening to us, Scott is a Jeep Cherokee guy yes. a, in his soul. Yes. So when he talks about, you know, like the kind it, of a lap of luxury. It, it touches and, me right here. And and <laughs> and not wanting a convert. Uh, you, his JK has been convertible probably a, a, in you can count on on Maybe one hand. Times. You can count on one hand. <laughs> I, I, on the other hand, I had a, a YJ, and at a period in my life, I took the top off on March first, and I put it back on on November first. Yeah. Other than that, rain, sun, snow, snow, sunshine, whatever, I drove it. Yeah. Um, so I'm that's totally the guy who's like, "You're gonna be fine," but that's not Scott. So, um, so as far as the leaks we're pretty well <laughs> yeah we're pretty well uh well, first time addressed. i got my jk and opened the door and the floor mat was full of water i was like i see this all right and i need to figure this out so i i i did some research and uh i have a pretty good idea what it is and everybody jumps to the t-tops or the freedom panels or however you want to call it if t-tops. you if you use t-tops, said t-tops 
we know <laughs> what generation you're from and we personally I, love it. I love it when a yes. when a customer calls in and says, My tea tops are leaking. Yes. We're like Are they in your in your eighty nine Firebird? Yes. <laughs> we totally get it. Because that was Mullet. the beater car of our generation. <laughs> That was we know like exactly everybody what wanted in high school was like, yeah, I want that feet, like a half. Three, I rock. I three, want an I rock. Three tires are in the grave Camaro that just <laughs> just rained on you. With the T-tops. <laughs> or the early not professionally installed sunroofs. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, was, my gosh. <laughs> the sunroofs that were just, just caulked all in. All caulked in because they were so tired of leaks gray, on their face. Gray caulking all over them. I still, because I'm, if you haven't watched any of my my video reviews on marketplace listings i am obsessed with like buying selling you know market analytics yeah. all that kind of stuff and i absolutely love looking at vehicles from the late 70s 80s and 90s with like and at this point in time it has like a sunroof but it's completely sealed yes you there's no there's no yeah, opening all the anymore. roof sealant has come out for a house at this point yeah it's just that like it's just like those people all learned the yes. hard way yes and and they're off uh, you know, in in like your your regular the, Chevy Equinox now, uh, <laughs> and 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 now the Jeep Jeep community has commuted over from like you know from their BMW yes uh, into their JKs and JLs yes, yes I said it yeah and, uh, and they're angered and they're angered by the the lack of of you know environmental protection. So I'm gonna be real real honest and brutal on some of this. Uh, you have floor drain plugs on your jk pull them out right now go do it <laughs> pause us go do it uh <laughs> mine have been out for a long time yes. <laughs> yep. because even with you doing uh, good preventive stuff you're gonna have water get in and it just needs a good place to go out if you don't want rotten floorboards that's what you need to do another place that likes the leak is in the back by the jack and tools if you actually want to use those someday you might want to take them out and uh put them somewhere else because it's going to leak and fill with water and fill with water and become a fish tank and, so and that is something that most cars do do we just don't realize it because uh, we don't go back there yep. um, and that's with not just jeeps so i have tried to combat this problem with my jeep multiple different ways and um i have replaced the seals i've you know tried rv uh seal uh <laughs> Uh, seal uh, stuff to, to make it better and the best thing I have found is this can right here uh, it has some sort of what uh, is that can what uh, is that can for people who yep, can't see sorry. Vanna fluid, come on fluid film in the can is the best thing I Cape have found in a can. Uh, you want to get some sort of good rag that soaks it up a little bit and just every so often go across all your seals and everybody always thinks oh it's leaking on me it's the roof it's actually not the roof. So uh, across the across the windshield where the top seals up to it, it has a rain gutter, and that does a very good job of channeling water. And it comes down to the doors and comes down. And if you open your door, you'll look at the door seal, and it comes straight down and then does this. It does a little jog towards the inside of the Jeep. And water has such high velocity coming down that seal, it will go past the seal and go into the floor. So I'm going to, because I'm a, I'm a big contextual uh, character, and, and we're going to go back to where we had started our, our joking conversation about um, <clears throat> CJs and YJs and, and a little bit into TJs, right? And, yeah. and so some of those earlier platforms, we did leak at the bottom of the windshield at the Cal seal itself. Oh, yeah. Um, we leaked at the fresh air vent in 97, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> the heater cores would leak. And so we had wet floorboards for decades prior to the JK. Yeah. And, and a little bit of that has to do with just the lack of aerodynamics. There is a, a, a core of engineering that exists that our Jeeps simply will never have. And that's just something that. And not know, be a Jeep. And well, and, and if we were to change that, it would no longer be a Jeep. Right. So, um, as far as the aerodynamics, the size, the the the, the center of gravity, the seat view, the, the boxy shape, all that kind of stuff. So what ends up happening by 2007 when we go to the JK, they reinvent the door surround, the windshield design, 
and the closure of the door, right? So up until, uh, again, you know, the CJs of the 70s and 80s, the YJ of the 90s and the TJ of the 2000s, they were virtually a similar door and seal and surround design. They approved upon it each time. Oh, by but great leaps and bounds. Leaps and bounds, but it was arguably a similar design. Yeah, and it always has Just inherent revamp. the same problem. And it had inherent problems. And that inherent problem is the fact that it is a big giant brick driving down the road. And that water is going to get in no matter what we do. That's yeah. just the nature of the beast. Yeah, they even get in Cherokee's secret. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, there's just more compartments down in the lower portion of the body for the water to hide. People yes. don't People don't know that it's there. Yep. So, um, it's like the cup that's not actually dishwasher safe, but it's like the double insulated wall <laughs> where the water goes into the insulated wall and it yeah. never comes out. Yeah. All right. So, anyway, so they go, you know what? We're going to break the mold, reinvent the wheel. And, and they, they do that with really the hard because ultimately the reality is that water is going to come in. Um, and so what do we do with it as it as it penetrates or permeates those uh, those channels? Right. And so how do we channel the water away? Uh, home designers know that the roof is going to see water. And so therefore they design, you know, roof line structures, gutters, you know, water runoff to move that water you're, you're never going to be able to you know just stop the rain from falling on your house that would be great if we could we can't so then how do we move that water away from the the house the vehicle the, the and known so forth? problems the known problems so they do that with the jk specifically and they attempt to create all these little rain gutters and so you had talked about the seal across the front yeah. um, there are actual rain gutters on our hard tops um, even our soft tops typically have like a, a, a little, oh, like a wing, like a little wing that that you know schlefts the water off the top. And in the door seals themselves, the door seal has a gutter, mm -hmm. and 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 we see this starting in 07, and it runs all the way through 18 um, in our JKs, and then it's a similar design in our JLs. And what's important is that uh, certainly I would say that. People in the, the 07 to 11, 12, they're leaking, and they're like, oh, man, this stinks. Um, it's yeah. an old Jeep. It's always funny when people yeah. call and tell me they got an old Jeep. Yeah. And it's like when they're brand 10. new and the seals are real supple and stuff, it doesn't really leak. Um, they're pretty good. They, there was a decent design, but as those seals wear, and now we're at that point, like my 15 is also at that point. I was going to say, we're seeing tons of people in the 13 to 16 range. Yep. Um, and, and 18s are coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, and so what ends up happening is that seal, it, it's just, it's rubber. And so, and it's rubber yeah. that gets compressed constantly, right? Yep. And it's, it's open and closed, open and closed. And that the design itself, it, uh, it has a little clip or, you know, it clips into the door frame itself. Then there's a little peak in a valley that's your rain gutter. And then you have the actual door seal. Um, and so what ends up happening is de grime, dirt, debris, particulate matter builds up. Above builds up in that rain gutter also that that rubber seal itself starts to dry out um lose its supple nature yep. uh, deforms uh if a piece of you know if an acorn little piece of acorn shell gets stuck in there now it no longer has that perfect smooth yep. surface um and again what scott had brought up was everybody thinks that their their sunroof their t-tops their you know freedom, freedom panels, panels they think that's where it's leaking now that can leak if yeah. the seal has been pinched in the process. Well, and, and I've had that leak, too. Uh, it comes on, it waters your radio. <laughs> and it comes down the center, not yeah. the sides. Yeah. If, if And I hear people all the time say, oh, well, it's raining, or I went through the car wash, and I watched the water run down what we call the A-pillar, which is um, if, you're, if you're in your front driver or your front passenger seat, if you're the driver, it's that front metal piece of structure that is the windshield to cowl to floor that's that forward um at your left hand side or if you're the passenger your right hand side and that's your a pillar b pillar is right behind you c pillar is yet behind yeah. the passenger yeah. so uh they say well it's coming down the a pillar my my freedom panels didn't get put back on right and it's like no that that's actually um and that can happen there's little seals and lips and stuff everything needs to be in the proper place to make it as good as it can be but it's actually the way that water is channeled down. 
it they're trying to get rid of it and it it can then cross over things so it's supposed to one of the advantages of fluid film is it leaves like a little bit of an oily surface on top of the seal and that oil will wick the water or hold the water back and it also makes the seal more supple and and pliable Um, so in my experience i'll do this it'll rain i won't have a wet floor and then a couple, maybe a month or so will go by, and then I will again. It's time to get the can back out. Um, and new seals will fix it for a brief time. A brief period of time. But then we're It'll, finding that a lot of seals, especially ones that are produced in the last <clears throat> year and a half or so, yep. uh, really are only lasting about six to eight months. Yep. Very challenging. Yep. Um, and uh, and that the factory ones are on national back order last year. They time are now. a national back order for like three years since yeah. the beginning of the pandemic. Yep. The big thing is if you're a JK and you open up your door and you'll see what we're talking about because there's actually a seam where the uh, kick panel, the cowl, and the front fender um, all kind of come together, and there's actually a hole. So you'll you'll recognize that the engineers actually designed the water to kind of enter the door. They know that they can't keep it completely out, but they want it to enter the door and drop straight down effectively coming inside the the structure of the jeep and then exiting through um the bottom of the the bottom of the door plate i do think they intended it to say on the outside of the door seal it it was intended and what ends up happening as you discovered years ago it actually jumps across the door seal and then comes into the true interior yeah follows down the seal and then follows the outside or the effectively the inside of the seal into the into the jeep itself yep then across the uh, and and how you can really find this is they'll usually at least on my 15 the factory or a dealer had put foam little blocks behind that spot on the seal to try to push it forward and make it engage harder which works again for a brief time until that seal breaks down some more or the foam gives up. Sure. And so here's here's the piece, and we'll talk about the foam and the stages of denial and then uh, uh, acceptance, uh, repair, <laughs> and then acceptance. Okay. Yeah. So here's our freebie. This is what I tell everybody because we don't want to charge you for this because it's pretty simple and it's not guaranteed to work anyways. So. Our first recommendation is if you're dealing with this, Dawn dish soap, a little bit of Dawn and some water, uh, swirl it around, get a nice little frothy mixer, go in and clean your seals well. Right? And that includes taking the freedom panels off and cleaning up there as well. Cleaning all those seals. Yep. Dawn dish soap or a you know a similar Especially product. After winter. And uh, get all of the gunk, debris, and grime out of there. If you have any of that foam, um, inspect to see... Uh, if it has deformed the seal at all, if the foam has compressed, um, any of those types of things, if there's been a problem there, you want to inspect that at that time. At that point in time, you're going to use the fluid film to do exactly what you had said with the seal itself, uh, effectively moisturizing and creating a protective layer on the, the rubber seal and see if that can, you know, can address. Obviously, you wanted to let it dry in between the, the washing and cleaning and then you fluid film it. Um, products that we don't exactly recommend. We don't recommend at this time a silicone-based product. Try it. Si- it don't work. Silicone, <laughs> uh, at, over the long haul, it tends to <clears throat> dry. It actually pulls the oils out of the rubber itself. Armor all is in that same circle. I really like Armor I do so too, but it's not good for that. Just just understand that that's not the best product. Yeah. Um and we'll talk about why uh why fluid film is here in a in a in a hot second. And uh and so you want to use a product that then moisturizes and creates that protective barrier to wick the water away. The one thing that I tend to get uh feedback on is people ask and say, "Well, can I just put like um double-sided window seal tape? Can I put uh, some type of extra foam and just make it so that basically when I shut the door, everything compresses fully and, you know, effectively shutting out any ability for water or environmental intrusion? Um, You can, but it won't last long. It won't last. And so the issue is that, again, these engineers, um, they're – as much as, as mechanical individuals, you might curse them in the moment in your driveway, they are actually you know, pretty bright characters. And they're, again, their intention is to channel the water. Whereas if you just try to effectively force or squeeze out the water by, by creating a, a solid barrier, 
um, that just it's just going to open up. It just delays the problem. It delays it, and, and the water and wind and all that kind of stuff is still going to find a way in. Yeah. Um, and usually that makes the seal even more compressed. Correct. And when it does fail, it really fails. It compresses the seal to the point of failure, yeah. and they, it compresses the little channels or journals that are supposed to be in the seal to help divert the water away from the interior of the vehicle and, and out the vehicle. So... Yeah. Um, that is our, our big recommendation. If you do that and you are still dissatisfied, that is when we advance the conversation to bringing it in and us taking a look at things. Um, we look at the seals. We've done full, complete Jeep seal replacements. Yep. Uh, we do have a preferred product itself. Um, really, the best seals are made by uh, the mothership at Chrysler. However, they have not been available for, you know, ever, ever at this point, it feels like. They're also like triple the cost of the aftermarket options. Mm-hmm. Um, you get what you pay for, is my opinion. Yep. Um, and so this is a situation where if you really, really don't want it to leak. All right, let's say that you want it to leak. Nobody actually wants it to no. leak. But let's <laughs> say you've reached the point of acceptance, right? Yeah. We've, we've Dawn dish soaped it. We've, we've moisturized it. Uh, we've done what we we're going to do. We decided that uh, replacing the seals is not the, the best for us. Um, at this point in time, you pull the plugs or if you haven't already, you should have pulled them already. Yep. And then we have used a product from Bedrug. Uh, they have come out with a product that is a mold and mildew resistant polypropylene carpet. And so it's a product that I personally installed in a customer's Jeep not too long ago. And uh, it it you take out the carpet. It has a, a thin backing, which is also made out of a similar product. Um, it feels a little bit like that, that crunchy green AstroTurf that your grandma had on her back deck. Um, I, You're dating us there. A little bit better than that. It does, you know, because it has a, the kind of a, a higher Berber. Um, and you can get it in black and gray. It's, it's pretty good looking. Um, it is then also easily removable. It doesn't a- attach the same way the carpet does, so it kind of c- comes in and out pretty easily. And so now that you're at the point of uh, an acceptance, the plugs are out, you run the mold and mildew resistant carpet, that helps cut down on the, uh, the, the heat and the, what's that? The smell. The smell, <laughs> the mildewy smell coming up, and, and uh, it cuts down on, you know, now you're not a, just a bare Jeep itself. And, and now it looks good. It looks like you have carpet in there, but you don't have all the problems that, uh, you know, that Scott has. So we see we have a question here from John Graber. Yes. How long do the seals, can you make that? Typically so can, last before you would. Just, just replace, just replace them. them. Just so, replace them. So um, pretty much it's when you just have buckets of water coming in. There's, there's no exact timeline. Each Jeep is going to be different. Each situation is going to be a little bit different. Um, but even when you replace the seals, you're getting about six to eight months max out of that. And then you're going to be back to your cleaning, supple uh, replacement nature. And uh, I would love to try uh, OE seals again on my personal Jeep, just to kind of give that a go. But sadly, I can't get them. Um, so I am currently using aftermarket seals on mine. And it, it's better. You know, it was a definite difference from my Worn, from your initial problem uh, worn factory ones um but at this point you know the little cl- snapshot of my jeep it's a you know uh 94 000 mile 2015 jeep that gets seen you know all the normal stuff uh, a jeep gets seen and it, it sits in my driveway it doesn't sit in the in, in the garage it's always getting water rain snow yep and whatever's going on outside Effect, effective ambient air temperatures yeah, the, the hot and the it. cold um so i think it's a real you know it, and the other thing I have noticed that really depends on where you park your Jeep and how the water Absolutely. It, attacks the Jeep as well. Um, so you don't, you almost want to pick your parking spot at your house if you're doing like I am and sitting outside where you're going to be um, and what direction the water or the weather comes in from. And, and that can make a big difference as well, almost as much as you trying to clean and, and prep the seals. So right now we're seeing uh, a massive failure on um again 13 to 16s i'd say um uh, every once in a blue moon the jls are getting a little loosey-goosey i think the biggest or one of the big things to talk about is this is a uh this is a compressed seal between uh, 
product, you know, parts of the Jeep that actually move, right? Yeah. And so when the Jeep is newer with less miles on it, it's just a, it's more a daily driver. It's a little more rigid. Tolerances are tighter. Um, the windshield to the body, the body to the frame, the frame, you know, the body to the door, that kind of stuff just hasn't opened and moved and shifted and shimmied. Yeah. It's not running down the highway. Uh, those folks of us who have 50, 60, 80, 100,000 miles on their Jeep, the body has naturally loosened up. And so under normal usage, um, it's just, you know, the body's awesome flexing flex and moving. and, you know, parking on top of uh, juice stuff. <laughs> equally, uh, individuals and, and a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of our customers who have really wicked cool off-road rigs um, that just have wheeled hard their Jeep. So you only have 15, you know, 20,000 miles on your Jeep, but you've wheeled it hard. Um then that body has loosened up as well, and that's a big factor. And people go, well, I didn't have this problem for 50,000 miles. So the problem with the – and we don't want to be the people who curse the aftermarket because we use a lot of aftermarket parts. I have a lot of respect for aftermarket yeah. engineers as well. It's a blessing to have a part to put on. Yeah, we have a blessing to have a, that is to have a part period to put on. Uh, the issue is that that aftermarket part is set up for failure a little bit because – if we were to put that aftermarket seal on a brand new Jeep, I bet we would get a lot more longevity. But we're putting it on a Jeep at most situations, a hundred thousand yeah. plus miles. There's already an issue. There's and already that's why issues. You're doing it. Yeah. Um, so, so John, I hope that that is 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 beneficial because um, you're definitely one of those guys who uses and wheels your Jeep hard, and and so that body's going to shake, shimmy, move. Um, you know, the impact of going over a big obstacle, twisting, turning, uh, everything is twisting. Back in the day, uh, those of you who had a, a XJ Cherokee or a ZJ Grand. Yeah, don't open the hatch when it's flexed. You couldn't, right? <laughs> You'd get up on, on something a, a Wrangler would have, you know, traversed fine and got out and moved around, opened their tailgate, shut it, blah, blah, blah. But because it was unibody construction, now the tailgate wouldn't open. The doors were stuck shut. You had a shoulder through it. Um yeah. You, you don't know how much your, your Jeep is actually twisting while you use it. And then Ken responding through, KLs don't leak. Yet. Yet. <laughs> we'll see. Especially the way you intend to use it, Ken. So, folks, uh, we are going to just transition right into the fluid film, right? We've already talked about it a good bit. So mm -hmm. let's talk about where did it come from? What is it uh, on a chemical reasonably? I'm not doing MSDS, right? So no. if you're right now a safety manager, I... I mean, you're not getting that. I apologize. You're getting, you're getting <laughs> broad, broad general. Uh, we sell this in our front end. This is actually a product. Did you were you aware of this before Greg came in smelling like it? No. All right. Quick storyline. So Greg joins us in in 2014, yep. uh, which I also was having fun going the dates last night as I went back and where the company was and blah blah blah. And he, he had his his awesome XJ already. He had his awesome XJ. Was yep. not LS yet. No, he um, had already modified it. Had a long arm. Had the IRO long arm. And on he it, was from the body shop world. He was from the body shop world. Professional um, in the body shop world. And so he starts coming around and he's, you know, working part time in, in, in SFJ here and yep. uh, offering, you know, unhelpful commentary and insight on, you know, <laughs> everything. on everything. And uh, he has an opinion. You're welcome to it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so true. And and he, he's and he's just incredibly gifted in so many things mechanical yep. and and just he always has great points. Just 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 the way that he sees in the world. And so he's talking about this product and he's talking about fluid film and he's it was, using it on this. It was the early days, and I remember this clear as day. And I was part time as well, but I'd always been around. And because of that, I run into Greg at some point, and he's not really knowing me, and I'm not really knowing him. So we're kind of dating friend wise right and uh, i walk out and i'm looking at his jeep and it's right outside the front door of the shop here and he has uh you know typical xj at this point it's got a front bumper the wheel liners had gone away a long time ago right and he's daily driving this jeep you know 365 and it's right this time of year winter is done and he's got these grade eight cadmium plated bolts so they're bright yellow bolts and I'm like, oh, you just put the bumper on. He's like, no, that's been on there for like a year. Oh, <laughs> why aren't your He's bolts? He's daily driving it down I-90 yes. through, the, through the snot. Too eerie every day from Conneaut. And I'm like, why Why aren't they rusty? He's like, oh, I use fluid film. Oh, what's that? And I, and then I, I was a revolutionary. Got, you know, the clouds parted. We heard angels. <laughs> uh, I got the tri-fluid film. I went and got my first can, and it was a religious experience. 
So funny, <laughs> funny thing with that. Um, and again, because it wasn't a product we were using regularly, everybody knows. I, I think we grew up in a in a society that was hooked on WD forty. Yep. Right, which is a water displacement uh, product. It's yeah. not a specifically a lubricant. No. Nope. It is a use all. Right. Grandpa had a can, pretty much in the yeah. back of uh, back of his tractor, his truck. He had a can of WD forty, a bigger hammer, yes. and a screw pry chisel, and yes. a crescent wrench. And you could fix just about any yeah. part of America. And if it was supposed. To That's move, what we need. We need and it didn't move. Fix you America. We need WD-40, a big hammer, and a crescent wrench. Don't forget the duct tape. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. If it did move and it wasn't supposed to, you duct taped it. If it didn't move, you hit it with a hammer, WD-40 did, and then just moved on with life. All right. So (laughs) in World War II, um, well, you know what? I should just circle back around real quick. Greg had this. Greg would come in after work, and he would do an evening um, shift here at the shop, and we'd be talking. And I, I just thought like it was his cologne, and I just didn't like I couldn't. Uh, <laughs> it has I was like aroma, it, and I was like, and that's probably time. the number one criticism of fluid film is it has a unique smell to it. It's not bad. It's not good. Yep. It's just unique. You know that it's Stinky there. Feet. <clears throat> I've heard fish. I've heard stinky feet. I, have, I don't think it's fish. Oh, my God. I <laughs> I did not think story. that Greg smells like stinky feet or fish, just so everybody knows that 100%. It just has an aroma. I thought that this was this guy's cologne, you know? I just thought it was his cologne. I was like, I just don't like it. And that should be okay. It's like you pass past that person in the grocery store, and you're like, oh, whoa, they're just, they took a bath today, you know, oh, in dear. their cologne. Poor Greg. Um, I just thought that this was, was his cologne was somehow. And, no, it, it is it is flu film. Flu film was created in World War II, it was actually created under U.S. government. You know how we love our U.S. government things. Yep. Um, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so it was actually created because of uh, submarines. And as the government was working on submarine technology, uh, basically you took a big chunk of steel, uh, which we had been we had submarines for you know years before that, but not effectively produced in in use in in wartime. Yep. And you took this big chunk of steel and you shoved it under the salty water and you made it live there. Yeah. And the best part is, in order to make it go submarine underwater, you have to take on outside water as ballast to make you you sink. So now you're putting the salt water in the, inside the steel structure. In the steel structure that's put together with rivets. So, <laughs> so, so the, the what what was challenged of the the good people of that time um, was uh, to create a product that was non toxic to the uh, to the to water the sailors. Um, you and, know, and the water and the water itself, and and that would not. You know, create it would not aromatize to the sense that it would be toxic in aroma or, or particulate matter that had you know turned into air, breathable air. And they came up with this product called Fluid Film. And Fluid Film is a lanolin-based product. Now, if you are unfamiliar with lanolin, it is simply the oils that um, are left over or come out of sheep's wool. Yep. So and sheep's uh, wool naturally wicks water away as well. So really cool history on the product itself. Great company. Uh, there are a couple competing products out there. Yes. Um, as, when, as always, when there's something good, somebody imitates. Correct. When something's good. It's simply <clears throat> because of its creation. Um, it's also, I believe it's more of a West Coast company. Um, certain things, uh, it was it was used largely in industrial application up until, you know, within the last 20 years, I would say. And, uh, and, and arguably, it's a fantastic product that uh, is is largely non-toxic, able to be used in tight spaces. We use it um, as a as a catch-all, right? Yeah. We use it um, on doors, um, Navy. <laughs> <laughs> I dump these squid juice. <laughs> Good job, Chuck. Um, and Kyle Kyle writes and says we fluid film on all our cars two times a year. We spray. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick half by, by, by the gallon. Uh, Sort of hearsay through three channels, but I have on good uh, accord that salt trucks, you know, they, they go out and salt the roads in the winter. They were going through beds and, and blades and stuff like that on a very high regularity, and they started using fluid film to, to coat that <laughs> stuff, and they now get years out of that stuff. It still happens, but it slows it down a great deal and as far as what kyle's saying um two times a year that is our recommended uh procedure uh we really recommend a 
so uh, as as usual, um, there's always a process to things. Uh, we really want you to clean it off, you know, clean off the underside of your, your Jeep or vehicle in general well somewhere around September, October before any of the schmutz happens on the ground. Don't spray over dirt or mud or... Hmm. Um, <laughs> You know, your last trip to Southington or Moab or uh, Anthracite or wherever, uh, clean it off really well and then do a good full application. There are a lot of good companies or businesses that do applications for people or you can do it yourself. Um, There is a number of businesses that will run hoses inside frame rails or into body channels, body pockets. Uh, If you don't want them to do that, I typically recommend you you say that up front because sometimes they pull body, you know, plugs and fill them or they'll drill a little hole and plug it, you know, so on and so forth um, through the winter. And then springtime about now when you're pretty certain they're not going to snow and salt the road, um, you do another good wash clean and fluid film application. And I'll even go as far as you if you're so inclined to buy a gun yourself and do it in your driveway, do it before every Southington or off-road trip. And Before you go out and AR your Jeep, um, Scott is talking about the fluid film application gun, yes. which is sold as a kit with its own pickup tube, um, yeah. and you can do by the gallon. And uh, five, all, five all the smuts that you drive so. through, your Jeep will come off way easier when you go to clean it. Afterwards, obviously, that washes the fluid film off, which is why I recommend you do it every single time you go out. Um, but... That is something. If I could make myself do it to my Jeep, it would be a much cleaner situation. If I could make it is. myself do it to the Jeep. Yeah. We, we do know as we, we say, do. not, not as, as we, we do. do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, a, what a great <laughs> life lesson there is in that. Yeah. Uh, as far as the the fluid film applications, you know, there are other there are other products out there. Um, this is our favorite for general everyday use yep. uh, economics. It does kind of creep and move. It clings, but it does wash off. That's so the big criticisms of it is that it does wash off under pressure and and you know longevity. Yep. And uh, it well, I guess there's three primary things. It's got a yellow or milky. Kind of uh, if you get on thick enough, it does. It's yellow or milky. A lot of people don't like that, especially if you spray it over like your nice aluminum inner fenders and stuff. Yep. Um, and then it does have a little bit of an aroma that I don't think at all it resembles fish or stinky feet, but um, and and the odor goes away pretty quick. It does. And I'll actually go as far as I actually like it. it washes off because when you get in and work on your Jeep, you're in it, so you want it to be able to come out of your clothes, not of your hands. Some of the other products I've worked on, uh, it actually does a black film, and that doesn't come off very easy. So. Yeah. And we could do a whole segment on undercoating, but we're not going to today. This is just yeah. a good one for you all folks. If you are still around while well, this was a very good <laughs> conversation, um, we are unfortunately going to make your ears bleed um, with me attempting to sing a sea shanty. I'm not going to do the whole thing. We're just going to do... Oh, I think you do the whole thing. Here's a small here's, portion. Here's Nobody a, actually wants to listen to it, though. Yeah, they do. No, here's the transition. Comment if you want them to do the whole thing. Yes, please. <laughs> Kevin, I know you're out there. Comment right now. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> For a sea shanty. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Jeff, do you? <laughs> Jeff, do you? <laughs> if... if Kevin wants to rock on. <laughs> Your wife doesn't count, and Chuck shouldn't count yet. I don't uh, <laughs> they're all going. They're all going. I just yeah. just get going. No, all right. Just just let's put everybody out of their misery right now. I'm not doing this. I don't get background music. No, it, it's a sea shifty. You just pound the table. Oh God. The music would have been better. Make, make make Scott pound the table. Why, they had that great intro music. Why didn't that why just didn't, keep going? I mean, he, why didn't he make... <laughs> he, uh, he does intro music and stuff for everything. He failed us. I don't even that's know a, how to pound on the table. Scott's going to pound on the table. I don't. I can't do rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, you got to do it then. You're the, the I rhythm don't even, guy. What are we doing here, Jeff? Why, why would we let's do this go. to people? I, let's <laughs> go, he says. I wasn't ready for that. You know what? We were not. I did not understand I was the assignment. Not prepared for no music. Uh, Jeff shows up. And he's like, "Here, we're gonna. We're finally gonna do this." I was like, "Okay." I thought there would be a background, like the rap battle. Usually, you get a yeah. little bit of music. 
You have cue cards. Yeah. I mean, what the heck? Port. Jeffrey, I don't even know. I don't. I. I. I you can't hear. I wonder. I don't there even know go. what to do, That's Jeffrey. Perfect. No, here. There. There's you your can. It. There's your can. I'm not a drummer, just to clarify. Oh, no, that's perfect. You have the it's most yeah, he's moving, his, he's moving his expensive keyboard out of the way. <laughs> yeah. That's me installing. I'm panicking right now. I'm in sheer, I'm in sheer panic because I, A, I'm not, easy, I'm not even reasonably good to start the conversation, and now you want me to do an acapella. I, I told you. Do you know that I was in an acapella group in college? Oh, see? So? There you go. Let's go. Now, can you do it in the in the? I didn't say it was good. I just <laughs> said I was in it. Can you do it in that that Irish? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I could barely speak well as it is. <sighs> Better. Than All right, Jeffrey, drum away. Uh, Let's do this. We're doing this together, and Scott's doing it over here. Uh, we're just gonna be. If we're gonna be terrible, we're all doing it terrible <laughs> together. <laughs> I'm okay. waiting for you to drum. Oh. <laughs> there we go. I don't know if anybody can actually hear this. This is this is great. <laughs> there once was a Jeep that we could see. The name of the Jeep was all but free. The trails blew up. Her shocks dipped down. Oh, how my wheeling boys. Ha! Huh. Soon we made the wheel and begin. Just bring us help some parts. And then one day when building is done, we'll take our Jeep and go. Ha! Huh. <laughs> she she not been two weeks before. When down on her a right wheel bore, the driver called all hands and swore he'd take that wheel in tow. Where'd you go, Jeff? Soon may the wheel and begin. Just begin bring us help some parts and then one day when the wheel, when the building is done, we'll take our Jeep and go. The best part right now. Da 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 da. All right, that's all you're getting. <laughs> wow, was that? <laughs> Woo. <laughs> so sorry, but, but we are really good working on vehicles, which is what we're going to go do right now. And uh, we'll we'll get some background music prepared and actually record that no. properly. Uh, no, so you have a full. No, song we're, we're not. not this. Later. No, we're not. <laughs> yeah. I'm sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeep family. Well, that was fantastic. Uh, like a train wreck. If you like some well mixed fluid film. <laughs> well mixed. All right, Chuck. I appreciate that. It was. It touched us in the wrong way. Um, <laughs> All right, folks. Well. Make sure uh, that if you stayed this long, uh, log on, grab some gear, get your stickers, uh, buy just the sticker itself, $4.19. We'll ship it to you. Buy the gear over $41. bucks. we will obviously ship you all of that, plus a sticker. Um, Jeep shows are coming up. Go make sure you go on and vote for the I Speak Jeep podcast t-shirt. Tell us which one's your favorite, and we'll see that one produced for the show season uh, while we're out actually out at events this summer. Uh, those of you who went wheeling this past week, and I hope you had a good time. I hope the, 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 the rigs recover. Mothers, happy Mother's Day to all of you, and thank you so much for all that you do uh, for us as uh, grown men who are children. So until next time, Jeep family, uh, Neil with SFJ4x4.com, Scott Brown, the Mad Scientist, I Speak Jeep Podcast, Jeep on. Jeep on. Okay.